deep. No, what I've started calling the daily dose. The okay. daily dose of God's word and encouragement. That's good. Over the next 14 days, we'll be broadcasting daily at 5.30 or thereabouts, pretty close. We made it. I'm not sure what time you have, but you actually have. Yeah. Okay, so, so we don't know whether this is a separate video or a new one. No, nah, I think it's just continuing. But just in case it's a new one, welcome. <laughs> that, what we're calling the daily dose, which is every day for the next 14 days or yeah, 12. 13. Yeah, 12, 13, today. 14, because this is day two of 14 days of prayer and fasting. Mm -hmm. We're going to bring you something from God's word about around the topic of prayer and fasting okay for 14 days do you think we can do that yeah of course 14 different points do we have 14 different points written out or? the lord will provide <laughs> let us know where you're watching from we love the interaction yes we do yeah in fact lou had an interaction today from someone where target target a target in Toowoomba that was like Oh, I know you. <laughs> I watch your videos. I was like, what? But, um, Shout out to Hope. Yeah, amazing. I was so encouraged because, you know, you do yeah. these things and you just feel the Lord tell you to do them, but you don't necessarily see or hear, you know, oh, this was great and that and the other. Whoops, sorry. But um, to run into someone today that was like, no, I'm encouraged when I watch your, video when I watch your videos. I've seen them and... It's great after a, a day where it's like been hectic to watch you guys. You I guys just, bring joy because you make me laugh. And I'm like, oh, that's awesome. That's so, so good. Yeah, I'm happy yeah, with that. Yeah, absolutely. Very encouraging. It's amazing how many times we have been uh, encouraged to, to do this. Yeah. So, you know, to... I just need to... Um, Share do something. It. Yeah, that's right. Keep talking, Lou. That's great. So we had a day up at church today with all the kids and the, some of the team up at the moment for, um, in, it's not Ignite. I've lost it. Ten of Hope. Um, Hope Ministry. So that's been great. They've been staying at the church building and the kids were there and so they all had a great day playing together. So that's what we've been doing today. We got home by the skin of our teeth. I reckon if you knew how <laughs> close it was, you'd be thinking we're crazy. Anyway, you might think we're crazy. That's true. Just because of um, the fact that we're doing 14 days without eating anything. <laughs> but hey, that's you. And this is us. And this is the Bible. And Jesus did it and we follow him. Right. And so in Luke 4, it talks about a time when Jesus fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. We're not doing that. We're doing 14. Mm, better. So, you know, we're not trying to one-up Jesus. No, no one's allowed to do 41 days. That's ridiculous. You're trying to one-up Jesus. It's outrageous. It is. It's amazing how quickly the benefits to prayer and fasting just begin to show. Yeah. One of those things that I found that comes very quickly is a sharpness, an increase in sharpness. Yeah, that's Have so, you found yes, that? it is so weird because I was walking past, um, cause I had to do a few extra things for getting ready for school today. And as I walked out of Hannah's, you have to have like a token for the car park. And that is normally something I would totally forget and go back to the car and be like, Oh, I need a token and go back. And I was just walking down the stairs and I was like, I need a token to get out of the car park. It just came automatically. No problem. I was like, Lord, that was you. That's fasting and prayer. That's my, my self being sharper. And that carnal noise is just not getting like, duller. Yeah. I was like, oh, I would normally not have remembered that. The carnality dulls. The spirit gets sharper. That's right. That's right. So let me read to you from Luke 4. It says that Jesus, then Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan River. He was led by the Spirit in the wilderness, where he was tempted by the devil. For 40 days, he was tempted by the devil. For 40 days, Jesus ate nothing all the time and became very hungry. Then, <laughs> then the devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, tell this stone to become a loaf of bread. But, are you all right? Yeah, keep going. 
But Jesus told him, no, the scriptures say people do not live by bread alone. Well, it's funny reading in the NLT. Or man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Then the devil took him up and revealed to him all the kingdoms of this world in a moment of time. I will give you the glory of these kingdoms and the authority over them, the devil said, because they are mine to give to anyone I please. I will give it all to you if you will worship me. Jesus replied, the scriptures say, you must worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil took him to Jerusalem, to the highest point of the temple, and said, If you are the Son of God, jump off, for the Scriptures say, He will order His angels to protect and guard you, and they will hold you up with their hands so you won't even hurt your foot on a stone. And Jesus responded, The Scriptures also say you must not test the Lord your God. When the devil had finished tempting Jesus, he left him until the next opportunity came. I was just making sure. That it was still, you don't have the mouse. Uh, right? That it was actually working? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Two. Yeah, go on. Confusing? Yes. And this new format? Yeah, anyway. Comment, please. So that we don't feel yeah. like you're, well, that's right. we're There's in echo chamber. Four. But, yeah, I can see. But the thing about, well, we, we plow on regardless yes, of, of comments or not, because behind the scenes and after the broadcast, people come out of the woodwork. <laughs> No, I was I watching when you and but I watch it after so you don't like you know call me out. Yeah, you know that's, that's not fine. That's not the first time someone in public has said, "Hey, you're from something." You know? I know. I was just like, "It's weird." Hey. Anyway, do you need to read prayer and fasting? <laughs> increases sharpness. That's day two. That's that's point two. Day two, which is a great example of us being very sharp with the increases having technical issues. Sharpness. <laughs> Jesus became, he was sharp to be able to respond just right to the devil tempting him. That's true. He said, you know. It sounds good. It sounds right. The devil even uses scripture. Yeah. And it's like, nah, I see you there. No. That's right. If you're the son of God, tell this stone to become loaf of bread. He was a son of God. Jesus, later on in the book of John, he turned five loaves and two fish to feed 5,000 people. Right. He multiplied the loaves of bread. Did you know that that was a miracle that the Jews were were looking for in the Messiah because this where it's written, where the scriptures say people do not live by bread alone, this is throwing way back to when the people of God were in the wilderness in Egypt, coming out of Egypt and in the wilderness Hello, Ivan. Amen. Thank you for the uh, comment. Thanks, Ivan. Gold that star. And the thumbs that up. It's working. <laughs> oh, it's working. Brilliant. See, this, the sound man is he, helpful yes. even from here. Always. When the people of God were in the wilderness, manna, God provided manna from right. heaven. And they said, What is it? Let's call it what is it, which is what manna means. Yep. And they ate that and they were sustained in the wilderness. Right. And so when the Messiah came, he was the, the bread that came down out of heaven. Right. And so the devil is tempting Jesus to say, hey, what, if you're the son of God, why don't you tell these stones oh, hey, Jelly. To, <laughs> to become bread? Why don't you tell these stones to become bread? Because Moses did this. If you're the son of yeah, God, yeah. like uh, it's going to make bread. sense. And so many times the temptation, I love what Dr. Wayne says, that it's tempting you to take something before it's time. Right. And that was the temptation that the devil was bringing to Jesus. Meant A lot of this is, you know, tell these stones to become bread. It wasn't time to multiply the loaves and give it to people to eat yet. Right. It wasn't time to use his... I suppose, spiritual gifting to profit himself so that he could feed himself. He used his spiritual gifting to bless many, to bless others. Right. Isn't that interesting? It is interesting. It is interesting. <laughs> he was sharp. He became sharp enough to know just how to respond and to say, no, it, it's not time. The scriptures say, "People do not, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God, but by every rhema. I feel like I could keep going along these lines and give away all 14 points just... Don't do that. 
<laughs> just in this broadcast alone. Because like I tell you what, you I'm just getting more and more as I'm thinking about these things. Like it's just, God's word is so amazing. I'm sure there'll be many more than 14, right. potentially. But taking something before it was time. You mm. know, King David had the opportunity to try to take the throne before it was time. That's right. But even when he cut off the hem of Saul's robe, it looked as though God had given Saul into David's hands and Saul was trying to kill David. And it's like an ideal time to kill Saul and take the throne. He was deeply sorry because he touched the Lord's anointed and he almost used the flesh to begin to take what belonged to him rightly. That's right. But the problem was he, he would have used the flesh to take what was his before it was time. Yeah. And so, so good, so important. It is because yeah, it can it can be you. It can be yours. Like it's like getting married. Yeah, well, we're engaged, so you know we can do whatever we want because we're getting married anyway. It's not time. It's You'll not time. You always regret um, not doing it the Lord's way. Yeah. And so there's things that are yours, um, but if you take them before it's time, it's really bad news. And you know what? Many times this is where prophetic words can be dangerous is because a person can see prophetically something, but is it time to deliver that word to somebody? Yeah, rather should we be storing it up in our heart like Mary did when she knew that Jesus was the Son of God. Come on. Um, this is why I like broadcasting with you. <laughs> <laughs> she stored it up in her heart, and I imagine she prayed for Jesus and was like, I'm not going to just go, Hey, everybody, my son's my- name, you know. <laughs> Didn't Mary do that? No, I didn't. No. Mary- <laughs> she didn't walk she around going like, like I'm carrying the Son of God, y'all. <laughs> Bow down and worship me. Or him. Any of it. She didn't. She just treasured. The Bible says she treasured, treasured it up in her heart. And yeah. we should do that. Like, you have to really listen to the the Holy Spirit because, yeah, you can have, like, discernment. And then there's things that blind Freddie can see that so-and-so is called to be an evangelist. And you go up and go, well, the Lord said, just take it easy. Do they have the maturity to receive that? That's right. You can really derail people by giving them prophetic words that might even just be your natural discernment to see like, hey, this person's this, this and that. But you giving that to them out of the will of God, it's so dangerous. Like, please read Thus Saith the Lord by John Brevere. Please read that. Great book. Homework for anyone who's looking to grow in the prophetic. Please read that book. It's so good because it's yeah. so true that you can just... You'll put the fear of God into That's you. That's right. Because you can <laughs> then naturally... Then read Fear of the Lord. Yeah, by John by John <laughs> um, you can get so caught up and it's so easy to see. And you can like see, yep, this is a bad decision. That's a bad decision. And don't do this. But if you do go up to that person and tell them these things outside of God saying, I want you to tell this person that... You can completely wreck them, completely destroy your relationship with them, and like, yeah, having them be derailed from the course of God from the, like for their life is very bad. That is so good, like, Lou. Because yeah, you go up to somebody and t- say, "I feel like God's appointed you as um, like an evangelist, a healing minister, and it's time for you to this." Like, you can see things, but right. when you start talking, you can accidentally, if you're not like the fear of the Lord and knowing that the God said this. You can like, you know, accidentally add some of your stuff in there. Um, you have to be so careful giving prophetic words. Like you have to know that you know that you know that the Lord has told you this about those people. Right. Um, if it's directional, you know, like pr- prophecy should never be like you have to do this now. Um, people should, we could get very carried away here or I could. You should be very careful when someone gives you a prophetic word, weigh it against the word of God. Um, is this from God? Does this sit right with me? Is it the right time? Is it the right time? Exactly. Like get counsel because yeah, people do, people get a word and the word may be very correct. It needs to be right right in your spirit. It needs to be right in your spirit. If it's not right in your spirit, then don't move on it. That's right. And the Holy Spirit will warn you. You'll get like a, uh, and then you just never force yourself to be comfortable with something that the Holy Spirit is warning you against. And you know what? Prayer and fasting sharpens you. That's right. So when someone does come and they give you a word to say, I believe God's got a word for you, and and then they tell you what they believe God's saying, your increased sharpness will be able to determine... Yeah, you're discerning. You, you can go, oh, that's, that is confirmation, or, okay, I'll put that on the back burner. 
we'll see, but I'm not taking it on just yet. I'll weigh it or a check in your spirit will go, eh, uh-huh. no. Listen to the check. And then, okay, I can see that bit, but the rest of it, absolutely not. You'll, be, you'll become sharper through yeah. times of prayer and fasting. That's right. You know, yeah, it, it's true. It's really true. You do become sharper. Jesus was very sharp. And it's interesting how the temptation where the devil brought these things to Jesus saying, you know, the scriptures say you must worship the Lord your God. When he says, um, I will give you the glory of these kingdoms and authority over them. Basically, the kingdoms, the devil took him up and revealed to him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. I will give you the glory of these kingdoms and the authority over them. But the devil wanted him to bow down and worship him. That was the catch. Not going to happen. No. But there, there was coming a time when, and there is coming a time when every knee shall bow. That's right. And every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord yeah. to the glory of God the Father. There, there is coming that time, but that time's not yet. That's right. The devil and so the devil was trying to get, yeah, trying to get him to take a shortcut oh, and say, goodness. I'll How give it to you. How many people have trained reps taking shortcuts? <laughs> Before it's time. Oh my oh, gosh. Man, There's you a know. process that God will take you through. Just Again, Dr. Wayne, process. thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Even some of his, what he has taught, which I think is pretty, pretty fascinating, was that the problem with David and Bathsheba when he committed yeah. adultery was that David took Bathsheba before it was time. Yeah. Because had he not taken her before it was time, had he not got lust in his eyes, in his heart, and that germinated into adult, that adultery mess. and murder, yeah. you know, or, yeah, that's right, and that whole mess, then it was very possible that Uriah may have died in battle and that Bathsheba yeah. became his wife. Because And the reasoning scripturally behind that is that Jesus came from the lineage of, of David and Bathsheba. That's right. So it looked as though it was right, but Wasn't David right messed time. up by taking it before it was time. Yeah. You know, I even thought with the third one, the devil took him to Jerusalem to the highest point of the temple and said, if you're the son of God, jump off. For the scriptures say he will order his angels to protect you and guard you and they will hold you up with their hands so you won't even hurt your foot on a stone. And the scriptures Jesus responded, the scriptures also say you must not test the Lord your God. Jesus knew what to say. He was sharp and he knew that there was coming a time where the angels would hold him up with their hands. That was the ascension. That was after Jesus had died, was resurrected and then ascended into heaven. But it wasn't time for him to ascend and show his believers, the people, his followers that he is who he said he was. Right. Like this is the Son of God. Look, he is ascending into heaven now. We're gonna we're gonna do what he says, even though he's not here. We're gonna go and wait in Jerusalem till we're clothed with power from on high and be witnesses, but we're gonna do what he says and Amen. I can hear the kids watching Superbook. And I can hear it too. That's the end of time we're <laughs> Revelation. Revelation. Nice. And he shall wipe every tear from every eye. Amen. It's great. <laughs> what a good place to, to finish. So yeah. fasting and prayer, day two, daily dose of God's word. Yes. That was that was a fair that was a fair chunk of God's word there for you. That's right, that's a good dose. Yeah, it's a good dose, you know. Yes. I don't know. I don't think you can overdose either if you want more. Just subscribe to the YouTube channel. That's right. There's, There's plenty, plenty there. more there. We'd prefer <laughs> that you watch on YouTube. In some ways, because um, YouTube's better, basically. Prefer, well, like, but we're not actually broadcasting on YouTube. It's we not up- live. No, we upload it after. So That's right. But we appreciate your subscription <laughs> and your like on, on YouTube. And otherwise, Facebook's tolerable for now. And we- <laughs> You've been getting scam messages saying, you're going to be cancelled. I'm like, this is obviously a scam. Yes, block, Facebook, delete. Facebook does have some issues. Yeah, block, delete, but block, delete. Praise God is a platform we can use to get the word out. So yeah. That's good. 
Very good. So if you want to see us, be with us in person, come to 15 Blake Street, Wilsonton, Toowoomba at Breakthrough Centre. And we'd love to meet you. 10 a.m. every Sunday, 10 a.m. We'd love to meet you. We'd love to see you there. Encourage you with God's word and just meet some other great people as well and come and have a have a coffee and well, not some food this time, but maybe next time. <laughs> maybe in 14 days. No, no, visitors are welcome to eat. Of we're, we're not like religiously oh, cult like course. forcing people to fast. It hasn't it, been forced at It's all. up to them. Oh look, there's my microphone. Oh. You probably haven't heard a word Sorry, that everybody. Bruce said. <laughs> and we're probably like banging the table and you're like <laughs> My ears. <laughs> well, hopefully you still heard what I said. That's right. If not, unlucky. That's right. Sorry. If you want to give to Breakthrough Center, we'd appreciate that. You can, we'll put a link to the website on the bottom of, or in the comments. We'll put a link in the comments. Okay. Um, seeing that you're so slow in commenting, actually, most of That's you. That's rude. Um, yeah, but, you know, if they're slow commenting, then I begin to troll and um, <laughs> begin to poke. And um, that's me. Yes. Look, you haven't even said hi to Luke. He said something. Hey, Luke. Thank you. Thank you, Luke. Uh, okay, why? Why? So unprofessional. There you go. What's this sticker? <laughs> We're going to go because I can Matt's mute. playing with the phone. I can mute Luke if I want to. Oh, my gosh. What's this? Can you please stop? Okay. We've got a. Now we don't even know how to end the broadcast. <laughs> I've wrecked. You did. I wrecked. <laughs> What have you done? Okay. <laughs> anyway, we'll, we'll work see that tomorrow, out. Five thirty. Lou will pray. If you don't know Jesus, you need to. Why don't you pray this, dear God? If you really sent Jesus to die for me, I want to say thank you and receive you into my life as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, let us know. Send us a message. We'd yes. love to hear from you. God is good. He loves you enough right. to send his son. All right. Now, do you want me to pray? Yeah, you can pray as well. Okay. Father, thank you for the ordination of prayer and fasting. We thank you for it. And even though our flesh hates it, or mine does, thank you that it is a spiritual benefit. You've put it in your word, and we, in Hallelujah. faith, uh, using that as something to put us instead with you, in, um, in step with you, Father. Thank you that it's something that we can hook into, and it's just going to take us higher and higher. Thank you for the wind of your spirit. Allow each person to feel that where they are in their homes now, wherever they're watching from. Father, we ask that you be there and help them feel your presence, Lord. Just strengthen each person as they as they choose to pray and fast and put time aside with you, Lord. We ask that you move on their behalf, as as your word says, that you're looking to and fro, looking for someone who's who you can show yourself strong on their behalf. So, Father, those of us that are praying and fasting, we're those ones. So thank you, Lord, that you're faithful um, to do that for us in Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you tomorrow. 5.30. 5.30. PM. Right. (laughs) Bye. No way I'm doing AM.